everyone, and welcome to the next episode of the Let's Play series, where I have already been hard at work. Remember there used to be a little blaze guy there? Well, he is gone, I have already moved him on to a nice new home. So if we come out here and we just take a little run downstairs, so this is the ground floor of our starter base, and I have popped him in here. What I've done so is I've removed a little bit of this wall, I've tunneled down a little bit, and I've made him his own little furnace room through there. So if we just come in here and have a little look, you can see I've made it nice and hot in here for him. Hopefully he feels nice and at home. Put in some nether bricks and that sort of thing. You should recognise roughly where he is. But because I can't stand your little face, you are now at least away from where you can be watching me when I'm running around upstairs. And the nice thing about this as well is that because I've got all of the storage just here, which I'm not actually using just yet, I presume I'll start using that soon enough. I'm getting pretty full of stone, at least at the moment. I can use this as well to store all of the copper and zinc that is going to be needed to make brass with this little fella. It does all work. It is all grossly overcogged at the moment, and that is on purpose, because if I just run back around again, we go and have a little look at this furnace from the outside. So if I just go around the back of the base here, You'll see as I come around the corner, it's this sort of chimney bit that I've built just here with all of the smoke rising from it to show how hot it is there with that little blaze guy. I'm just going to hop up the top, and the idea here is that I want those cogs to be able to be seen through this sort of grill that I've made. I want it to look like there's an awful lot of contraptions going on in there. Maybe there's fans and cooling systems and all sorts just trying to keep in there vaguely usable without that little guy setting the place on fire. And that actually brings us quite neatly to something that I really don't like about the first base that I made. This little starter base that you can see here, this building. This was the very first one that I made, and it has three water wheels on this side, and they are powering all of the contraptions that are inside the building. So it's powering all of the presses and the whisks and everything else that's sort of going on in there. It gets all of its power from those three water wheels. But... Where is the water coming from? I mean, that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. It drains into this little pond, and that's fair enough, but where on earth is that originating? That water is quite literally just materialising out of nowhere from a brick wall, which is remarkably magical for this place that is supposed to be more on the industrial side. And so what I want to do is I want to make a link between that part of the starter base and this furnace. I want to make a water tower essentially that sits between the two so that there's an origin for that water and there's also a link in some way to this furnace as well if there's a reason for it to be there. Basically, the water can be used to douse the place if it becomes on fire or something like that. And so, let's have a little time lapse and I'll build up a nice little water tower over the top of this and see if we can get these buildings linked. So I think that is looking a little bit better. So you can see what we've got going on. We have got a little water tower up at the top there, which is able to store water that hopefully would come in off that roof. It can then be sent over this sort of waterfall to power those water wheels. Now, do not get me wrong, that is an awful lot of water to be coming out of a tower that's only that big. But meh, it was never going to make perfect sense. At least it's better as it is now. And if I just hop back around the other side... You'll see that there is another little spout coming out the side of that tower there. So if things do get too hot inside this little furnace, then it's able to sort of pour water onto it and cool things down in there so that our little friend doesn't sort of light up, blow up, whatever it is he could perhaps do. Maybe he's a bit explosive sometimes. Either way, it's just a little bit of a safety switch going on. So I think what I'm going to do is I will just fix up this terrain a little bit like that and now everything is looking a little bit more settled in so you can see what i've done is i've started extending the path that is the same down in this courtyard around this side of the building as well and i've taken it over towards where the furnace is but i've tried to keep around the actual furnace with this much more gray sort of stone where maybe quite a lot of ash or something will have fallen down out of all of that smoke so it's not got the nice sort of pinkish hues that the rest of the pathing's got I also have this little space just here, which I didn't really know what to do with, if I'm honest. And so I'm just using it as a bit of like 
ad hoc storage for things that they will probably have been using over in the quarry. So like one of these blocks, it's a bit of a small one here, perhaps it's not quite ready to be transported yet because normally they're three tall, not just two. That sort of thing, just an idea that the area is actually being used. It does mean I've had to take down some of the mud that was just around this side that I was using to see into the furnace. So I've put this little bit of andesite scaffolding just on this side so that I can climb up and still sort of have a little look and make sure things are all still good in there. Yep, everything is still nice and solid. Oh, and one thing just to point out as well, what I have done is if I just sneak over here, I have put a little lever just there on a clutch so all of this machinery can be turned off. It doesn't have to be running all the time. Otherwise it's going to become a little bit of a lag fest in the future. But the only other thing that I've done of any interest, I suppose, is I've added this little tree in and I just wanted it to be, well, dead because it's died in all of the fumes that are coming out of the furnace. Pretty certain no tree would be able to survive just there. But overall, I am happy with how this little area is looking, so it's time to crack on with the next job. And what I really want to do now is start having a bit of a think about mechanical crafters. So we've got the aim in the future of being able to make terracotta easily, reasonably soon, so that we can crack on with the village on the other side. For that, I am going to need to make the crushing wheels. And if we come and have a little bit of a look at those crushing wheels in JEI, so we just come over here, we might be in crust, we wanted crush crushing wheels, you will notice it has got this strangely humongous recipe that you would look at and think, how on earth am I going to do that? And the answer is, of course, we're going to be using these. So this is a mechanical crafter. If we just have a quick little look at those, what it is, is it's a little device and they all slot together and each one basically accounts for one input slot that you would normally have on a crafting table. It will make a lot more sense when we make them. For these though, we need lots of brass casing, hence why we needed our little blaze guy, and we're also going to need to get ourselves some electron tubes. And electron tubes really do sound super fancy, but they're actually made of reasonably simple components, just of nether quartz, redstone dust, paper, sand, and some iron sheets. And to make them, it just involves a few little processes over at the old crafting bench. And so, all we need to do, so in order to make our electron tubes, the first thing we're actually going to need to make is what's called a rose quartz, for which you're going to be needing eight of these redstone dusts and just one little nether quartz, and then they will be able to combine together to make a raw rose quartz, just as you see. And then we need to be able to polish that, funnily enough, to make it polished. And to make something you can polish it with, you're going to be needing sandpaper. So one piece of sand and one piece of paper, that's going to combine together to give you your sandpaper. Then if you come back into your regular sort of screen, your regular interface, and if you hold one of them in your offhand, so I've now got the sandpaper in my offhand and the rose quartz in my normal hand, exactly the same action you'd do if you were going to eat, so right click, and I will give it a good sanding like so. And so now, as you see, we've got our nice little polished rose quartz. This then is very easy to combine back in our little interface on the crafting table with one iron sheet, and there you go, there is your electron tube. One electron tube is then going to be able to make us three of these mechanical crafters, and my mechanical crafters we're going to need was going to be, I believe it is 21 of them for our crushing wheels. Yes, 21 of these crafters. So I'm going to need seven electron tubes. Once you've got your seven tubes, you're then going to need to have seven of the brass casings as well. So I'll pick seven of some wood that I don't use very much. Let's have some of these oak logs, they will be fine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Strip these ones back. Here we go, and then I should have enough brass, yes I have, to be able to convert these ones all into our brass casing. There we go. And then we can pick them up reasonably easy with our axe. It would have been a little bit quicker with the wrench, but that's fine. We can just use that to pick these ones up. There we go. Right, so we've got our electron tubes, we've got our casing, and now I do believe the last thing the recipe is going to call for is going to be some crafting benches, because why not? They might as well be used in this as well. A couple more of them. That's going to be enough on the wood front. Is that enough? There we go. Right, so let's have a look at our recipes. And there they are. There's our mechanical crafters. So we'll make up a load of those. There you go, 21. We are now ready to go and arrange them so that we can start making our crushing wheels. And I think what I've decided is that while, yes, I do want to have the mechanical crafters in my world, I don't really want them to have their own building. I'm not going to use them all that often. 
especially not all 21 of them. So I think they're going to go underneath this crane. There is quite a lot of space down here in this little area underneath here. I can dig this out. And I think that'll be quite a nice place just to tuck this crafter away. So I'll just get this hollowed out and I'll come back to you in a second. Okay, so I have done a little bit of work down here. All I've done is I have narrowed down this area of terrain just here so that it goes a little bit more steeply down towards the sort of river that we've got down on this side where I'm probably going to put a little sort of mini dock at some point. I have got a little bit of building there that I'll show you in just a second, but I have made a little room underneath our crane just so that we've got somewhere to house these mechanical crafters. And because it's somewhere I'm going to be waiting, <laughs> I've made it as a bit of a little waiting room. So we've got some bookcases that will eventually get books in them. At the moment I haven't got any, so I'll pop them in there as soon as I've got them. But this is the wall that I've left blank and ready to have our mechanical crafters put into it. I've also got a little bit of storage in here, and in here I've just put the bits and pieces that we're going to be needing to be able to make our crushing wheels. But for now, let's take a look at the mechanical crafter. Now in this instance, it does have to be arranged in a reasonably straightforward way, but it is quite specific. You don't want to be making any mistakes. So what you want to do is come up to a nice big area of wall that you've got set aside and you're going to need to place it down as a three, just like so, and then a five directly above that and you're going to need to have three rows of five. So there's our second row, there is our third row and then another three up at the top just up there. Well, not there. Grab that one back down. Can I grab them with you? Wait, yes I can. And just Ooh, there we go. Right, so that is the exact shape that you need to make in order to be able to make your crushing wheels. And the easiest way to check that you've got it right, so you can have a look and say, mm, is that roughly what I need? Hopefully it is, but if we come over to JEI again, just have a quick look at that recipe, it shows you exactly the shape that you need to be able to create these in. So we can see what we need to do is we need to have andesite alloy running all the way around the edge then one piece of stone in the middle, and then some kind of wood filling in the gaps in between it. And then that'll be able to make two little crushing wheels for us. So we know that this is the shape that we need to make. Mm, yep, there he is. That is the exact same shape. And one thing you will notice about these little mechanical crafters is that they have all got a cog inside the middle of them just there. And so as long as they're all connected to each other, so long as you power just one of them with another small cog, you'll be able to run the entire machine. In this case, it is all running off this little cog that you've got just here, and that is connected to three water wheels which are directly behind the back. I'll just show you those ones. So you can see what I've done is I've built this sort of retaining wall over on this side of the island. That's going to go nicely in line with the base of the pump house over there, so that we've brought the land up to this sort of level. And then I've made this sort of tube, this tunnel, this sewer, this outlet pipe coming from underneath the island where all of that water is spewing out and you can see my name through there. Hello Tyra. She's through there and she is waiting for me to go back while I'm on the free cam just while I show you this. You can see those are the wheels which are powering our mechanical crafter. And what I like about this is that if I just come back and then I click this little lever down here I can switch this machine on and off. There you go it's gone back off again and if I go back out you can see what's happened there is some sticky pistons have just pushed up a row of blocks blocking off the water that's behind them and that stops everything from moving. Which just means I've got a little bit more control over whether or not everything is running. But, pleased as I am with that, I won't lie, I am rather pleased with it because I like things that work nicely, let's put our focus back on this. So this is a bit of a weird looking machine if you've never seen one before. You can see it's got all of these little arrows pointing up, all these little grey sort of bands pushing everything upwards if you sort of see them like a chevron, like it's got a little arrow in there. And that is something that we need to pay close attention to because we're going to fill each of these up with an item slot but we need them to converge together somewhere and that is where the wheels will actually form. So what you need to do is you need to come up to your mechanical crafters and we need all of these arrows to basically be flowing into each other until they come to one point. In this case, I want them to come to down here because this is where I will be waiting to pick up the wheels. And so, if you come over to your little mechanical crafter and then you right click it with your wrench, you'll notice you can spin those little grey bars around. So it's now pointing to the right, north, left, south, that sort of thing. What we need to do is we need to turn them all around so that they are going to be slowly flowing in this direction. 
So all these at the top, I want them coming down, really. So if I just turn all of these ones around, just like that. Now everything at the top will come down. Everything on this side is going to go towards the middle. So you need to go to the side as well. There we go. Now everything's going to go in that way. And then everything that's come down to the bottom, I need it all to sweep off to the edge. So we just point that one in that direction, that one in that direction, and that one in that direction. So you can see that if you put an item there, for example, how it's going to flow through this machine is it's going to slowly go down, then it's going to reach there. It can't go down any further. It needs to travel in this direction. And everything is going to end up just here when it sort of condenses to form the wheels. But if that all sounded a little on the convoluted side and you're not too sure what on earth I am on about, then that's fine. What I will do is I'm just going to grab hold of these bits and pieces in here. This is what we need to make our crushing wheels, remember? So I've got some spruce planks, I have got some stone, and I've got plenty of andesite alloy. So looking at our mechanical crafter and remembering the shapes that we need to make, we know that we need to run andesite alloy right the way around the edge. That's the easiest one. So we can just come all the way around and in each one of these, right the way around the edge, we will put in some andesite alloy until it is full. There we go. None of the slots have been missed. We need a stone in the center and then we need to fill in these four here with our wood. There we go. So that is everything that we need there in order to be able to make our little crushing wheels. Nothing has been missed. We are good to go. So now what's going to happen is as soon as I flick that lever, it'll switch the machine on and you'll see everything start to move. So I should pop him on. And there we go. Everything is going to start coming together. So we've got the ones from the outsides moving in. We've got the ones up at the top moving down and everything is slowly converging down until it reaches right down at the bottom. And you will notice as well that it is not moving fantastically fast. Hence the reason why this has been made to be a waiting room. It's fine though, because I'm only going to be making wheels occasionally. So this is perfectly fast enough. It doesn't need to be any more technical than this. I'm not in that much of a hurry. Anyway, so we can see them all coming down together. You can see how it's sort of forming that shape there, like it's making our wheel for us already. And once these ones come together, it'll be a proper little wheel shape in there with all of that andesite alloy. And there we go. Magic is happening somehow. Da, 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 da. And there we have it. One crushing wheel. Come on. Pop off. There he is. We have got our crushing wheels. Ah, it always feels like a proper little advancement of your create world when you finally get hold of these. You just know that you can do so much more, so much faster once you've got them. They also look so darn cool as well. I mean, look at it. It's a humongous great big wheel that squashes stuff. Who doesn't love one of them? Anyway, let's run this back. I've got a horrible feeling it is now nighttime. It is. Let's scarper back in again quickly before I get shot. Dodge, 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 dodge. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Let's get back in. Let's not die again already. Sleeping. And good morning. But you know what? I don't think this has been a bad day at all. We've done lots of work around here, so we've got our new little building going and we've got everything set up with our little furnace fellow, our happy little blaze in here. You still in there? I'm guessing you're still in there, considering I haven't moved you. There he is! Perfectly happy little blaze, and now we have also got the mechanical crafters. So I think next week it is going to be time to get that terracotta machine up and running. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this little episode of the Let's Play series. Happy Minecrafting everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye!